What is up everyone and welcome back to the Apex with Wall YouTube channel. This is the Kamish AP and before we get into this what happened in 2023 video slash 2024 update video, I just want to thank you the fans for a great couple of months, especially on the YouTube shorts, the subscribers, the video views, the pitching tutorials. It has been amazing. I just want to thank all of you guys for everything. February was a record breaking month and March was even better than that. Uh, were you at the recording of this video uh it is march 29th i'm recording these videos a little ahead so i can get ahead on editing uh we're sitting at 380 subscribers i still cannot believe that which is it's been awesome so thank you guys so much but anyhow in 2023 we had our season and you guys saw there were five series videos and then the video stopped and then there were some YouTube shorts produced a few months later. There were condensed game videos. There were scrimmages, pitch tutorials, all that. So, uh, so that way none of you guys are confused. And also because there were a lot of great stuff that happened in 2023 that I want to shout out. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a recap what happened in 2023. First of all, we did play a whole season, but um, I will say this. Uh, during our championship game, there was something that happened that just really made me stop loving being the commissioner of the Wiffle Ball League. So I honestly, in the middle of game three of our championship, I kind of just took my stuff, went home, and had no intention of ever being the commissioner again. But things changed. I, uh, it is my league. I love growing uh, the league and I started up from the ground up and now we are here so first of all we will be having a 2024 season I'm in the process of getting our rosters ready for May uh, expect opening day around the second or third week of May and I'm very excited for 2024 uh, but first and foremost I want to just let you guys know what happened in 2023 because there are a lot of really cool moments and a lot of really good performances by certain players so let's get into it. So the last video you guys saw in the 2023 season was the 12-6 Mafia versus 9-1-9 Punishers game two. And at that moment, the standings were as followed. The 12-6 Mafia were ahead of the standings at a three and one record. The 9-1-9 Punishers were in second place, a game back with a two and two record. The Capex captain had an even one and one record after their one series. And Walter Whipple was at the bottom of the standings with a one and three record. Uh, and at this moment, if you guys didn't remember, the Courts and the Bozos, who were two of our teams, were no longer in the league. Uh, this really only affected Walter Whipple as Walter Whipple played the Bozos. No other teams played the Bozos or the Courts. So basically, the standings would go off win percentage and not wins. So anyhow, the, second the next series that was not shown that was played was the Capex Captains took on the 12-6 Mafia. This was big. As you guys could kind of recall, and I'm showing it right here, Jake Busick, the captain of the Capex Captains, he actually had an arm injury prior to the season, so he really couldn't throw full speed, as you see, against the Diamond Punishers. He was kind of just lofting it up and hoping for the best, but he regained his full arm strength, and I kid you not, he threw a wiffle ball equivalent to what felt like 100 miles an hour, and no one was able to catch up to it. So... With Jake back to full speed, he was absolutely dominant on the mound against the 12-6 Mafia. He had he threw all three innings, struck out struck out every batter that he got out, so nine strikeouts, zero hits, and only one walk. And it was unfortunate because that one walk actually happened with two outs in the last inning. It was one batter away from a perfect game, but nonetheless, a no-hitter in his first ever game. Brandon Fletcher though, he kind of lost it on the mound. As you guys saw in the videos, he was dominant in his first two games on the mound against Walt, against Walter Whipple and the 9 9 Punishers. But unfortunately, uh, after getting out of a nice jam in the first inning and striking out three batters in the first inning, he kind of lost it in the second and couldn't record it out. He wound up walking seven batters and giving up four earned runs. Uh, they went to the bullpen. That wasn't really much better and the Capex captains wound up taking game one of a score of eight nothing. Game two was interesting because the roles were kind of reversed. Noah Sides was on the mound for the Capex captains and he had a 
a less than expected app performance. The 12-6 Mafia wound up mercying the first inning after Noah Sides gave up six walks and one hit with five earned runs to his name. So very unfortunate sight from Noah Sides. But however, the Capex captains rallied back. Jack Snipes, who actually played as the team's number three arm now, and as the emergency pitcher where if Jake or Noah didn't do good, he can go into the game and be the cleanup guy. He threw scoreless innings in the second and third inning, which was absolutely amazing to see from Jack. The Capex captains wound up scoring four runs in the second inning because of a Jack Snipes home run. And then we get to the bottom of the third, Jake Busett got on base, and then Nathan Bunch, big country, cap six player of the year, with a walk-off home run to win the Capex captains the game and sweep the series. They won that game with a score six to five. And at this moment, that Ended the 12-6 Mafia season with a 3-3 three three record. The Capex captains advanced to 3-1. So now the Capex captains are sitting at the top of the standings with a 3-1 record. The 12-6 Mafia are 3-3. Three three, Nominal and Punishers 2-2. Two and, two, and Walter Whipple 1-3. The next series was actually Nominal and Punishers versus Walter Whipple. And there were some big moves made by both teams. The Nominal and Punishers added former Gold Glove Award winner, former Silver Slugger, former uh, Cy Young Taliver pitcher, Owen Chittister, who was primarily on the gentleman. Owen Chittister, he was coming back absolutely dominant, especially because he was no longer playing baseball. He was able to throw the ball as hard as he can uh, for the 9-9 Punishers. Walter Whipple added former member of the 12-6 Mafia, Ben Brockman, who wasn't really the best of a wiffle ball player, but yet again, with the bigger zone and no speed limit, he was able to throw the ball a little harder, so he he went up, he went out there. Uh, the In game one, the 9 9 Punishers actually took a victory of a score of 1-0. Walter Whipple tried out a new player, Jens Steiner, who, after a reach-on error and three walks, the 9 9 Punishers scored a run. Ben Brockman then came into the game and shut it down and then had a shutdown second inning. But on the other hand, Owen Chittister just pitched that much better. He threw a complete game shutout with eight strikeouts, only giving up one hit and two walks. So Owen with a dominant performance, Ben Brockman showing potential with a 9-1-9 Punishers, one nothing victory to advance the 9-1-9 Punishers to a three and two record. The first time they've had a winning record all year. But then game two, I was myself against Josiah yet again, just like how it was in the 2022 opening day. And it was honestly the exact opposite. I had a very bad game. Honestly, the worst game of my career. I gave up five earned runs in the first inning off of nine walks and no hits. I just, I couldn't find it. The thing that sucked was, so in that series, it was myself, Owen Chittister, who was out of eligibility, my brother, who wasn't a pitcher, and Matthew Hensel showed up to the ballpark for the first time, and he's not a pitcher. So it really was me just struggling on my own little island, uh, which sucked. But Josiah, on the other hand, he came into his own. He had the best game of his career with a complete game shutout, striking out six batters, giving up only one hit and two walks, resulting in Walter Whipple's second win of the series and quite possibly the biggest upset in Apex Whipple Ball history. With the, with the Walter Whipple Ball Club going, advancing to a two and four record, still sit at the bottom of the standings. Now when I punish was finished their season with an even three and three. So that left it to one last series between the two and four Walter Whipple Ball Club and the three and one Capex Captain. So the scenario in this game the Capex captains win one game. They clinch first place. Walter Whipple sits in last. They will rematch in the semifinals. And then the 9-1-9 Punishers will play the 12-6 Mafia in the semifinals in the three in the 2-3 game. So the Capex captains, they felt confident that they were gonna get the job done, and they did. I mean Game one was an all-time performance by uh one, Mr. Noah Sides. Noah Sides actually threw the league's second ever perfect game 
and recorded eight strikeouts in the process. We haven't seen a perfect game since Aiden Salpeck, who was our 2021 MVP. So in so this was the first time we saw a no a perfect game in two years. Jack Snipes, he did what he does best at the plate. He hit a home run, and the Capex captains were just going off. Walter Whipple wanted to throw in a combination of four guys trying to save Josiah for game two. Uh, and those four guys combined to give up four hits, nine walks, and ten earned runs, resulting in a Capex Captains 10-0 victory, which clinched them first place in the division. So game two really meant nothing, but the Capex Captains still wanted to add some stuff on. Nathan Bunch wound up hitting a home run for the Capex Captains in their 13-0 victory. Josiah Rusher, he did not have a good outing on the mound as he gave up 12 earned runs, only striking out one batter, and gave up eight hits and eight walks. It was very rough to see that. Jake Busick, on the other hand, a no-hitter, another no-hitter, with all nine of his outs being strikeouts, only giving up two walks. So with that being said, the standings were final. The Capex captains were the one seed, with a 5-1 record, are set to take on the 2-6 Walter Whipple Ball Club. And the 12-6 Mafia, who are 3-3, three three, were set to take on the 9-1-9 Punishers, who are 3-3. Three three. Now, the reason why the 12-6 Mafia got home field advantage is we have to go through tiebreakers. Normally, when there is a team with the exact same record, the first tiebreaker is, did was there a team that won the series, or was it a split? In this case, it was a split, so we have to go to the next tiebreaker. Then we go to who scored the most runs in the series, and that was also a tie because in game one, the 12 6 Mafia won of a score 5 0, and then the 9 9 Punishers won game two of a score 8 to 3. So both teams scored eight runs in the series. So then we went to runs in the season, and the 12 6 Mafia took that. So this was a very interesting series. Game one on the mound was a matchup between Owen Shittister and Brendan Fletcher. By the way, the playoff roster for the 9 Punisher was only myself, my brother, and Owen Shedister. There was no play, no pitcher restrictions in the playoffs, so we were set there. Brandon Fletcher, on the other hand, his lineup consisted of himself, Marwan Rahal, Owen Masterson, and James O'Hara. So Brandon Fletcher was the only pitcher that showed up for the day for the Club Six Mafia. So we knew that Brandon Fletcher was going to throw every pitch of that series. But Owen Shedister, in game one, through a complete game shutout, no hitter, and didn't walk anyone either, but it wasn't a perfect game because there was an error in the field, but all nine of his outs were strikeouts. Brandon Fletcher, though, he still pitched a very good game, only giving up two earned runs, courtesy of an Owen Chittister two-run home run, uh, but two earned runs, nine strikeouts, two hits, and five walks for Brandon Fletcher, not bad at all. But game two is where it got interesting. The 9 9 Punishers, we we were talking. We knew that Brendan Fletcher was throwing every pitch in the series as he was the only pitcher that showed up. So we decided to make the move work. I threw game two of the semifinal because if hypothetically we were to lose the series, Brendan Fletcher would be even more tired than he is and Owen would be at a full stamina. But I wound up throwing three innings, eight strikeouts, only giving up one hit and two walks. And actually, in the first three innings, I didn't give up a hit. The thing that sucked was, despite me having a great outing, having gone three innings, eight strikeouts, only giving up one walk, actually, Brendan Fletcher just pitched that much better. In his first three innings, he struck out nine batters. And he threw shutout ball as well. So we had to go to extras. You know, the last inning... Bottom of the third, it was kind of it was kind of interesting. Owen got a hit. My brother struck out. I got a hit, which advanced Owen to third, and which advanced me to second base. Owen then struck out. My brother walked, and then I came up to the plate with a full count, two outs, and struck out. That is when we went to the top of the fourth. Owen and I had a little conference on the mound before the inning, and I we were both like, "Look, I'm throwing the ball really well." Let's keep me going until something doesn't go well. 
I walked the first batter, and then there was a little crack in between the fence. The gate wasn't closed all the way, and James O'Hara just so happened to hit a, uh, a ground rule double in between the fence. So with runners on second and third and no outs, we had another conference, and that's when I felt confident enough to go to Owen, and I, was, I made a very unselfish move and said, Owen, here's the ball. Get us out of this, man. And he did. We wound up going to the bottom of the fourth, and it was kind of the same scenario that happened. Owen gets a hit. My brother strikes out. I get a hit, which advances Owen to third. I then go to second base. Owen strikes out. My brother walks. I'm up at the plate, full count, two outs. And I hit a hard ground ball to first, and it was a very close play. Controversy was going crazy. Everyone on the 919 Punishers was thinking safe. Everyone on the 12-6 Mafia was thinking out. But we went to the video replay. We went frame by frame. We went half frame by half frame. Everyone at the field touched the camera to see. And it was a clear cut tie to the back. So we decided, look, we don't want to end the team season on a tie goes to the runner. So we decided I got back up to the box, full count, two outs, bases loaded, ball four. And we had a walk off walk to send us to the championship game. And this was very exciting. I knew the job wasn't done. I knew we had a hard task because more than likely we were going to face the Capex captains, which um, the Capex captains had their series of their own playing. Uh, they went up against Walter Whiffle and Ben Brockman was back at the ballpark. Ben Brockman actually was not at the previous series against the Capex captains, which is why they had that big hit day. But anyhow, Jake versus Ben. These guys were not giving up any runs. Five innings went by with zero runs. And then the bottom of the sixth came. Noah Sides stepped up to the plate and he hit his first career home run in a walk-off fashion. There was a runner on base for the Capex captains to win game one of the score, two nothing. Uh, tip of the cap to Ben Brockman though. Five innings pitched, two run runs. 13 strikeouts, three hits, and only one walk. Jake Busick, though, threw a per the league's third ever perfect game, but what makes this special is it was through six innings. Six innings, no hits, no walks, no errors, and all outs were strikeouts. 18 strikeouts, which was a league record. Game two, though. Uh, the Capex captains, just like the 9-9 Punishers were thinking, they were like, look, all this team really has is Ben Brockman. They could have turned over to Josiah, but because of how dominant Ben Brockman was, Josiah even said that, you know, Ben's dealing, he's going to keep him out there. So Jake decided to turn over to Noah Sides. Noah Sides got him in a little bit of trouble. Jack Snipes cleaned him up in the first inning, but Jake was like, all right, no more playing around. Jake went in for the last two innings, threw six strikeouts, didn't give up a hit, gave up only one walk. And Jack Snipes had a three-run home run to make the difference. And the Capex captains won that series, won that game 3 nothing, and swept the series to advance to the championship. Ben Brockman, though, solid game, three innings pitched, three earned runs, eight Ks, three hits, no walks. Ben Brockman, very impressive pitching performance throughout that playoff series. Uh, but unfortunately, his season was over, and the Capex captains are advancing to the championship. And then this is where the interesting stuff happened. So, Nominon Punisher, Capex Cabs in the championship. Owen Chittister versus Jake Busick. Guys who have not given up a single run. And guys who threw very hard. And we went nine. And this, honestly, this is when me and a lot of guys really weren't having fun. Um, nine innings went by and there wasn't even a single base runner. No balls put in play. Everything was a strikeout. No one even had a shot of hitting the ball. We put in number twos. And I'll be honest, I gave up a home run to Jack Snipes. It was a good shot. Capex Captains won the first game 1-0. But it just sucks that, um, you know, no one was, everyone was going up to the plate knowing that there's not really a shot of getting a hit. Uh, second game, it was Parker Chapel versus Noah Sides on the mound. And Parker Chapel actually wound up uh, outdueling him and won that game. 9-9 Punishers won game two. And then the third game, this one, it got interesting. It was Jake versus Owen. The same stuff was going on again. Uh, but the thing that sucked was there were a lot of distractions at the field. And there wasn't a whole lot of 
uh, there were a lot of other things going on behind the scenes and there was something that just really set me off and I was like, you know what, I'm I'm done. I'm taking my stuff and I'm going home. I canceled the game, uh, canceled the season. But I will say this, the cape, that, that first of all, that stuff is being fixed for 2024 and I'm not gonna get into it because uh, I wanna just leave that behind me. But the Capex captains were up before the game got called off. So therefore I will acknowledge the Capex captains as the 2023 Apex Wiffle Ball champions, and they were the first ever Apex Wiffle Ball team to win a championship as a true expansion team. Yeah, the gentlemen won the Winter League Championship as an expansion team, but this was an ex but they were an expansion team with all experienced players. This was an expansion team with majority rookies. So the season ended. And here were the final standings. The Capex captains with a 9-2 record, which was actually the third best record in Apex Wiffle Ball history in the past four seasons. Uh, the 9-9 Punishers finished with a 6-5 record. 12-6 Mafia with a 3-5 record. And Walter Wiffle with a 2-8 record. Uh, so, yeah. That's what happened in 2023. A lot of really cool moments. Uh, and that stuff is just going to continue. So, we... We're looking forward to a great 2024 season. And by the way, we are now starting uploads every week. We are at the point where we are close to the season. There's a lot of stuff going on. Next week's video, I am going to announce uh, our top 10 players from the 2023 season and their stats, as well as who won the awards for our 2023 season. You'll see who won MVP, Cy Young, Silver Sluggers, Gold Glove, all that good stuff. So thanks for watching Apex Wiffle Ball. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in next week's top 10 players and awards video.